Hi, this is Steve. This is a bit of a ranty, rambly diatribe today, but not, I hope, without some points of merit. I watch Gardener's World. Yes, it's my age and middle-class upbringing, and I also subscribe to the Gardener's World magazine. For some considerable time now, I've become irritated by the constant finger-wagging. There's small things like the word compost. It's now never used without the words peat-free being put in front of it. Along with all the other climate catastrophists, the BBC Gardener's World programme has decided that we can't use peat anymore, and so for several years now, we have been blitzed by the constant repetition of this peat-free compost mantra in both the programmes and the magazine. Then we get the comment or opinion piece in the magazine by the millionaire Monty Don, in which he constantly wags his finger at us about we are, how we are desecrating the earth and destroying the planet. And aren't we basically bad people? Every month, his piece has some snide, finger-wagging, moralising along these lines. It's like he thinks he's talking to recalcitrant or particularly unintelligent children who need to have the same propaganda message repeated over and over and over, like learning your times tables. And of course, peat-free compost simply isn't as good for growing plants, flowers, etc., as the peat-based stuff is. You need to put extra feeds into it, and on a more regular basis. Most feeds are chemically produced, or at least chemically enhanced, and come in plastic containers. How's that for climate concern irony? Now, it's okay for the likes of Monty Don with his enormous garden area in which to create his own compost and money to buy anything, literally, that he wants for his garden. But what about those who have very little space or very little money? And this, on a small scale, is indicative of why many of these wealthy liberal, self-righteous, moralising views are elitist, and so ultimately anti-democratic. Those pushing the collection of policies we now know as woke are not the ones negatively affected by them. And that's a very arrogant and anti-democratic attitude to take, albeit, at least in Monty's case, always camouflaged in jocular, avuncular, oh-so-caring moral language. Now, I've always felt that it ill behoves wealthy people let's say, for argument, the top 20% of income, especially those with huge public platforms given to them for a particular purpose, in this case, to tell us about how to grow fruit, veg and flowers, to use, or rather abuse, their platform to tell the rest of us what we should think and how we should behave on socio-political issues. Again, it's elitist condescending arrogance of the highest order. Self-righteous, finger-wagging moralism from the top 20% of society, aided and abetted by their wannabe acolytes in the 60-80% to 80 bracket. The I'm all right, Jack, no financial worries group, basically, looking down their noses at the feeble-minded proles who need to be told what to think and how to behave, what is moral, and what is not. We saw this most obviously via the collusion in, in propaganda around Covid with all political parties, all officially appointed public health leaders and regulators, all media, both traditional and social, coalescing to spread, at best, exaggerations about the risk of Covid and about the effectiveness of their chosen policies, at worst, known and therefore blatant lies. For example, that the vaccines prevented transmission, when they don't, and indeed Pfizer never even tested to see whether or not they did. And it's been happening for decades now over the not totally untrue, 
but again clearly exaggerated climate crisis. None of the dire predictions around which over the last 50 years or more have come to pass, you'll note. A few decades ago, it was Mary Whitehouse, a middle-class Christian conservative, moralising at us and telling us what we should think and how to behave. Now, it's the invariably wealthy, left-wing liberal woke elites like Monty Don and Gary Lineker, and pretty much anything put out by the BBC, ITV or Sky, not to mention The Guardian and The Independent, etc. Now, the point is this. Absolute certainty about your moral view of how the world should work is equating yourself with God. Even if you're an atheist, if someone says you're playing God, we know it's not a compliment. And we know why it's not a compliment. Yet so many seem quite happy to indulge in this kind of behaviour. And I can only think that so many believe that their higher education or higher wealth or higher influence in life means that they are de facto better people, morally better, and so more deserving, such that they have the right to tell the thicky peasants what to do and think. As I've said, it's a profoundly undemocratic concept. It's basically me and my views equals wise and righteous. If you disagree with me, you and your views equals foolish and evil. And the knock-on effect of this way of thinking, of course, is that we can all agree that fools can be ignored and or ridiculed, can't we? And evildoers, well, they can be silenced in whatever way we see fit, can't they? And again, we see this happening in all forms of media to anyone, however well qualified or researched, who disagrees with either the official COVID narrative or official climate catastrophe narrative or official Ukraine-Russia war narrative. As I say, a profoundly undemocratic, elitist and blatantly authoritarian way to behave. It's almost as if the global elite have agreed to give up on democracy as it doesn't work. In other words, they don't always get their own way. I really think they do look at China and think that's the way things need to be done. And they want to return to some form of feudal system. A bit like Huxley's Brave New World, where the alpha class are in charge and decide everything, and the beta class and all those classes below just do what they're told bribed by shallow, drugged-up, brain-numbing pleasures. A sort of pleasure slavery, which the elites, of course, see as both kind and beneficial. The authoritarian nature of this way of thinking means that our public discourse is not This is what I think at the moment, but you have a different view, which means I may be wrong, so let's talk and see if we can understand each other's position, and who knows, one or even both of us may shift our position, even if only slightly, and agree that, even in disagreement, neither of us are either stupid or a monster. No, I can't do that. That shows respect for the other person, which, of course, morally, at least, is ridiculous. This accepts the possibility of my own fallibility, that I may be wrong, that I can't be absolutely certain about my own righteousness, that I'm not in fact equal to God on all moral issues, which clearly I am. Instead, we get this arrogant, elitist, anti-democratic, self-righteous moral finger wagged at us on a daily basis via the media. Even programmes or articles ostensibly about sport or cooking or gardening 
have to get in on the act, for act it is. It's very performative when you stand back and observe it objectively. And it is elitist because the downsides of the various policies these wealthy woke celebrities throw at us are always borne by the poorest, while not affecting them and their like-minded class in any meaningful way. But the really sad part is that the proponents and supporters of these top-down faux moral ideas have stopped thinking in the true sense of the word. Wedding yourself, cult-like, to an ideology and then using your mental faculties merely to continue justifying, without question, the tenets of the cult, is not thinking. Simply speaking and behaving in dogmatic mantras is not thinking. Thinking involves self-reflection and introspection and self-awareness of your failings and inadequacies so that you may choose to improve. As I said in a recent piece, the link is in the description, it's making angry zealots of us all by forcing us to take sides between extreme and simplistic ideological positions. And that's both unnecessary, wrong, and profoundly dangerous. But those that behave in this moralistic, cult-like way justify it to themselves by telling themselves it's the morally righteous and the only morally righteous position. As I mentioned, any disagreement is not just mistaken, but evil. And being righteous, like God, remember, whatever they do or say is, by definition, good. Whatever the consequences. Rather like the Spanish Inquisition or Puritan witch trials. The wrongness is so clear, rationally, objectively, but it isn't wrong if you've bought into a closed-minded cult theology. We all have to examine what we think is the way things should be. We all have to step back and see the direction of travel around many of these supposedly highly moral ideas and, where we don't agree, be brave enough to say so. Now, I wrote this piece before watching a short soliloquy by the comedian Andrew Lawrence about this wealthy, liberal, self-righteous, finger-wagging, moralising attitude. But here is his short piece, and it sums up my thoughts perfectly on what the woke cultists are really all about. Now, a lot of people who've been labelled woke are a bit confused, aren't they? They say things like, I don't know why people call me woke, as if it's an insult, when what it actually means is being kind and having empathy and being a good person and having a social conscience. Well, no, it doesn't mean that. What woke means when used as a pejorative term is that you have a very rigid parochial set of values and beliefs that you've ignorantly mistaken for objective truth, a system of values that you believe are fundamentally good and morally righteous, a set of values that you're convinced are undeniably correct and necessary to human happiness, a set of values you're so committed to that you've adopted a militant, grossly intolerant attitude towards anyone who happens to have different values, anyone who happens to believe things other than what you yourself have mistaken for objective truth. The existence of people who don't share your values makes you so furious that you've convinced yourself that these are bad people who need to be shut down and punished. And through a deeply malicious combination of lies and intimidation, you've attempted to impose your personal values on everyone, smearing anyone who says something you disagree with as sexist, racist, homophobic, transphobic, and any number of other ists and ics. 
Through doing this, you've destroyed many people's lives and brought us all cultural impoverishment and social decline. Moreover, through a rabid commitment to an entirely irrational gender ideology, which you've convinced yourself is morally righteous, you've allowed predatory men to encroach upon women's spaces all around the world and openly engage in child grooming in public. You champion diversity, but you don't like diversity of ideas. You champion liberty, but you don't like freedom of speech. You preach about social justice on a phone made by a child slave. You use the expression, words have consequences, entirely oblivious to how fascistic that sounds. In short, you're a hypocrite of the highest order, and you are all of those things you would claim to hate the most, a bigot, an authoritarian, and a bully. So thanks to Andrew Lawrence and thanks for listening.